Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16 beta 6 and iOS 16 public beta 4 have been out for a few days. I've been using it full time, but there's even more features that we've found since the initial iOS 16 beta 6 what's new video. So I wanted to share that. And also Apple released iOS 15.6.1 earlier this week. We'll talk more about that, the overall experience that I'm having and the experience you're having based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 9,000 votes and 133 comments, which I've gone through through just to see what it's like overall. Now, first I wanted to talk about the Apple security issue that's making its rounds throughout the news. And as you can see, if you just search for Apple security, you'll see a ton of different stories about this. And the thing that they're not telling you until you click into those and then read way down into it is that Apple has already fixed this with iOS 15.6.1. Apple actually fixed it in the security update and you can actually see the security update on their website. They talk about the exploits to the kernel and WebKit where someone could take over control of your device. So they highly recommend installing it since this actually fixes that issue. So I just wanted to address that as many people have been asking me to. So it's fixed as long as you have iOS 15.6.1. However, iOS 16 beta six, we don't know if it fixes that. However, if it doesn't, Apple typically will patch it with beta seven. And we'll talk more about when to expect that a little bit later. Now, the first thing is iOS 16 beta six is actually causing American express cards to oddly be removed from Apple wallet. So if you have an American express card in your Apple wallet and it's removed, you're not alone. Apparently a lot of people are actually seeing this. Now, last week I shared with you that live activities is a nice feature we've seen. We can actually see that by setting a stopwatch or an alarm here. We'll just set an alarm or a timer rather, we'll start that. And if we go to our lock screen, we'll have the timer with live activities. I showed you a different app that shows the same sort of thing and it's I event timer. However, Apple has removed the ability for it to use live activities. Now this is across all devices and apparently live activities will not be in the initial release of iOS 16 for the public and will be coming later with different TV shows, things and more as apps are updated. So unfortunately we're not going to see that for a while. Hopefully they'll reinstate it before it's actually released to the public. But as of right now, it's not working and they've removed that experience. Now, as far as new features and changes, well, the battery percentage in beta six, I showed this before where we have the percentage in the upper right. Some people love this, some people don't, but if we go into our settings and then we go down to battery, let's switch over to dark mode here, go to battery, and you'll see the battery percentages on. If we turn on low power mode before it would actually force the battery percentage to be turned on. Now you can turn that off. This button was grayed out before. Now we have the option to do that. Additionally, there's a nice animation when you plug in the phone, put it on power, it actually expands the actual battery and then shrinks back down just like before, but they've updated it since we have the percentage in it. And one more time, as I put it on MagSafe, there we go. It should expand and show you that it's charging. So it's a nice little new animation within settings. And then under wallpaper, if we go under wallpaper and tap on customize, we no longer get a little pop-up that says customize current wallpaper or add new wallpaper. It just goes right in and allows you to customize it. So it saves you a little step there and it's a nice update. Now I have beta five on the left, beta six on the right. And if we press and hold the lock screen going into our wallpaper selector, tap on customize and then tap on the little photo icon, it brings us to a different place. Now it's bringing me to featured where before it was just jumping into photos. So that's a little bit of a different interface change for me. I know it may be different for everyone, but this is what I'm actually seeing. Some people were also seeing it jump right to all. Now, if you're using the weather wallpaper, we'll go over here. The clouds in the background actually update in real time based on your current weather location. This is something I didn't mention before. You'll see it just changed to where we are. It's a little cloudy and they're moving, they're animated, and then they update throughout the day. It it looks like they didn't update as quickly as before. Maybe they've fixed this, but more people are seeing this update much faster in beta six. Also, when you go to set a wallpaper, it seems to be much more customized based on what it's seeing in the background. So if we pinch and zoom, move it around, this is just a photo from unsplash, or maybe we switch to a different one. It will look a little different as far as its overall customization. So you'll see here, this is what it defaults to. And if we pinch and zoom, move this up, you'll see the text changes initially. So you can see it a little bit better. And it's really nice that it's very fast and customizable now and sort of matches the different font selections that you would want for the, the picture. 
picture itself. So it's a really nice update. With Beta 6, it's just getting better and better and more refined. When we go into Spotlight Search and pull down, the animation seems to be smoother and a little nicer. So you'll see it pops up from the search down here. With Beta 5 on the left, Beta 6 on the right, it definitely seems a little bit better. Of course, we have more suggestions here too with Siri suggestions. So you'll see again, We'll do that again. The animations change slightly or is just smoother. Some people are seeing a completely different animation as well. Now, something that's actually been there a little while, but maybe people weren't familiar with, so I wanted to share it, has to do with typing in search and then typing the word code. There's actually an app called Code Scanner that allows you to scan QR codes. Now, of course, this is built into your camera and it's in previous versions of iOS, but just wanted to mention it as if we go into it, now you can find code to scan and we can turn on the flashlight to make it a little bit brighter. So I just wanted to mention that it is in iOS 15 as well, and maybe even previous versions, but was found by mistake. And I actually hadn't seen that or heard about that in quite some time. So I wanted to share it. If you have a photo with a lot of text in it and you tap on the live text button, there's now an option to copy all. So if it sees just text, you can easily copy all of that text just by tapping live text. Now you may not have the live text option depending on your device, but if you do, you should have this again, this isn't new to beta six, but it is something I haven't mentioned before within your iCloud settings. If you have iCloud plus and you go into hide my email at the top of hide my email, there's a search box. So you can search through all of your different accounts. Maybe that's on apple.com or something else. And you can easily find that now it was in previous betas, but it's something again that I hadn't mentioned and has been found since also to do with email. If we go into the mail app and maybe we have an email ready to send, but maybe we want to send it a little bit later, press and hold on the send button tap on send later. And then of course we can schedule it. That's not new in iOS 16. However, if you tap on send, it sends it later. You'll now have a new folder that appears under your mailboxes with your send later mail. So go into that and you'll see anything that you can send later. And it will also tell you when it's scheduled for. So these are just example emails, but it's really nice that we have an easy way to see those. If you delete these, it actually disappears from your mailboxes. So if we get rid of these, we'll just trash this mail and this one go back and it disappears. So it only shows up when you have mail ready to send later within iOS 16, there's a lot of collaboration options where you can share files and more with people and within the code, they've changed some things. And thanks to my friend, Steve Mosier, I'll show you some other code changes later, but one that's a little bit more obvious is maybe you want to send something within files and collaborate with someone on something within files. That file must be smaller than two gigabytes, according to the code, or it will be too large for collaboration. Also, the number of participants cannot exceed 99 people. So that's actually built into the code. If you want to share something also to go along with sharing is iCloud shared photo library within the code. It specifies that you can only share with people within your region for some reason. So only in the same country and region. So if you have family abroad that you'd want to share with, apparently you can't do that. Maybe they'll change it in future betas, but it's something that is mentioned within the code specifically. Also mentioned within the code, you can see here on Steve Mosier's Twitter account, he posts some more things. Apple financing may use your Apple pay later account status, such as whether you have applied for or are currently using Apple pay later to determine whether a message is relevant to you, including a marketing message. This could go along with the rumors that Apple's going to ramp up marketing throughout iOS. Hopefully we'll have some options to disable that. Again, there's more legal speak that's actually in the code. And then also there's things that do with sort of wallpaper limit reached. I talked about this in the initial what's new video. However, I haven't reached that limit yet. I've created about 25 wallpaper or more, and I still haven't reached that limit. Also cellular plans are now called eSIM. So basically if you're deleting all of your cellular plans, it says delete all eSIM. So it looks like Apple may be making a big push toward eSIM. Maybe we'll find that out with iPhone 14. And again, I showed this duplicate card that was in the initial what's new video. And there's just some changes in the wording there. And then here's the information about collaborations and shared photo library. Again, some additional legalese with the Apple weather app notifications. So that's just some wording changes. The overall experience has been pretty good with beta six. It definitely seems to be a little bit more stable for me. I haven't had the typical issues I've been having with messages with group messages, not working and having the text box available. And I haven't had messages freeze up like it did in beta five for me.
Also, the set wallpaper shortcuts seem to be working better. Some people saw them working properly in beta five. Now they're working for more people in beta six, but occasionally there's still some bugs. So if you have something to set a wallpaper, maybe change it throughout the day and you have this set. It could be a little bit buggy, but definitely seems better. Now also dictation once again, seems to be a little bit worse for me this time around. It's a little different. I use it all the time. And now dictation is activated. And typically what I'm seeing is sometimes it's really bad when I'm speaking. And then if I stop it, it actually corrects itself afterward. That's what I'm seeing. If I'm in a more echoey environment, it's really bad and doesn't work well at all. So it just depends where I'm using it. However, in some cases it seems to be fixing it properly after you're done speaking. So they definitely change some things here. Weather is also working a little bit better and faster. As far as the widget is concerned, at least on iOS 16 beta six, you'll see it updates quickly when I go into the weather app and it wasn't updating quickly on beta five for me. So I saw a difference there initially when I set this up for the video and the weather app is also working properly again on watch OS nine. So watch OS nine beta six, the little weather icon is working properly. If I go into it, well, sometimes it doesn't load properly, but then it loads before it wouldn't load at all. Now it's actually showing on the home screen regularly. And also this watch face is modular. It used to be called infograph modular, and then it has the app Lumi in the middle for those who are curious. Now that leads me to, should you install iOS 16 beta six or public beta four? If you're on a previous beta, absolutely install it as Apple continues to update things, fix bugs and more, and also be sure to report those in feedback. If you're having issues as they actually resolve issues. One of the issues I reported was the issue with messages, not having an actual way to input text when I wanted to do that in a group message, they fix that and actually check up sometimes if you're having an issue to see if it's fixed. So they definitely are looking at those. Also, if you're wondering, and maybe you're wanting to hold off, you want to know if things work as far as apps for banks and more, there is actually a list of compatibility. I'll link in the description. If you want to check it out, someone made a nice spreadsheet that actually lists all of the different apps and how they interact with different betas. So that's super helpful. And I'll link that in the description, but different apps will work differently for different people. The banks I use work fine. Some banks don't, it just depends where they are. Now, as far as iOS 15.6.1, like I said, it's mostly a security update and very, very important to install. So I would definitely install that. If you were wondering if you should do that, if you're on iOS 15.5, it's just a security patch. It doesn't slow down the phone. Most people say it's basically the exact same thing. However, when you first install an update, you could have some issues as far as your battery life, as it does have to process a lot in the background give it a few days and it should improve overall. It's really no different. It's just patching very important security issues. So make sure you install that if you haven't already. As far as iOS 16 beta seven and public beta five, at this point, we're on a weekly schedule. I would expect that as soon as maybe Monday or Tuesday, so far it's been every Monday for the past couple betas. So Monday, the 22nd seems very, very likely with a following update, maybe on the 29th with the release candidate, we may only have beta seven or beta eight, and then a final release candidate, and then a final release to the public sometime in mid September. Now, September is when we expect that new iPhone event. Apple's iPhone 14 event should be either on the 6th or the 13th. However, lately Mark Gurman from Bloomberg is saying to expect it on the 7th. This is a little bit unusual, but definitely could be right as Labor Day is the fifth. People will come back to work on the 6th and then actually have a, a day or so in between that event and get it set up on the 7th. So that's really what I think will happen. The seventh seems very likely. And if that's the case, we could see updates within the next week or two. So typically they send out those updates for Apple invites about a week before they don't give a whole lot of time to prep for that. Now, as far as overall battery life on beta six, it's okay. Last night I went to bed and had 30%, maybe a little bit more than that before I plugged it in at night or put it on the wireless charger at night. My battery health is currently at 99% and here's coconut battery. So you can see what my actual cycle count is. I shared that. And then if we go to the last 10 days, you'll see yesterday I used three hours and 25 minutes of screen on time, three hours and 57 minutes of screen off time. And 
used about 75%, 70%. That's not great battery life. So with Beta 6, my battery life hasn't been great. It really is hit or miss for people, but the overall stability seems better. Apple focuses on battery life and getting everything working properly before they release it to the public. So hopefully we'll see that soon. If there's features causing issues, sometimes they'll pull those features to make sure they have more time to work on them. But it seems to be okay. For those of you reporting iOS 15.6.1 battery life, and that seems to be the same as 15.6. It doesn't seem to fix much. It's basically the same thing and just a security update. So I wouldn't really expect any differences there. But again, it takes a few days to notice. And as far as performance overall, well, Geekbench scores show that it's pretty good. I had 1,711 for single core, 4,713 for multi-core. I had to run this twice as earlier results were pretty poor. As you can see here, multi-core was 4,573. I had a lot of apps in the background. I thought maybe they were causing an issue with some of them. I closed them out, ran it, well, just a moment ago, as you saw, and it's pretty good. It's a little bit better now than it was the other day when I ran it when it first released. So it's a little worse for single core, better for multi-core, but it's basically performing as you would expect, whether that be scrolling through different pages, opening different apps, whether that be on an iPhone 11, an iPhone 8, everything seems to be nice and fast. So I booted this up not too long ago. Give it just a moment there. Go to browse with music. Different apps are loading just fine. I really wouldn't expect any difference in performance and ProMotion is nice and smooth. No issues there. As far as the overall heat, well, I did just run, run Geekbench scores on this. It is a little bit warm, but it's been a little bit warmer than it was before. The last day or so, it was typically a little warmer than normal. Nothing to be concerned about is it's not hot, but definitely warmer. And I thought I'd share that with the FLIR image camera again with the thermal camera. So you can see here, after running Geekbench, it's about 98 degrees Fahrenheit, and you'll see there it's quite warm in that specific area. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the YouTube community poll and some of your comments. And at the time of this video, we'll refresh, we have 9.2K or 9,200 votes. So thanks to everyone that voted, 31% of you are saying that Beta 6 is great, 3% are saying it's terrible, which is pretty typical for a public release, so that's not bad. 12% say it's okay, but it has some bugs, 48% are using iOS 15.6. 6.1 or older, and 6% are using Android. So thanks again to everyone that voted. Now let's take a look at some of your comments. Ron Leedy, he says, running iOS 16 public beta 4 on a 13 Pro Max have several apps that have UI issues, particularly blank screens. The first noticed is settings, Wi-Fi, and settings Bluetooth. Once I force quit the app, the problem seems to go away. Will says, so far, iOS 15.6.1 is okay on his 12 Pro Max. Battery seems about the same as 15.6, not heating up as much. Diana says, my iPhone 12 mini is running just great on this beta. However, my iPad mini started doing an endless restart after getting hot while playing games. I had to hook it up to iTunes and wipe it, then start over. Seems to be fine now. I do love iOS 16 and and can't wait to get iPhone 14 Pro this next go round. And that's sometimes what happens with betas. You'll have to wipe the device and start over. So hopefully you don't have those issues, but again, make sure you report those in feedback so Apple is aware. Stacy says, using iOS 16 public beta 4 on iPhone 10s, so far it's been great, no app issues encountered yet, and battery life has been great for me. Things are definitely on the right track regarding stability, and I'm looking forward to seeing what improvements and the next beta brings. And so that's everything with iOS 16 beta 6 and public beta 4. Of course, we should see weekly releases like I mentioned before, and hopefully we'll see some additional changes. But as we get closer to the final version, we'll see less and less features, less and less changes, and they'll just make things more stable. Battery will improve. And overall, it should be a great release. Hopefully it's much more stable than early iOS 15 and 14 versions. But let me know how it's going for you in the comments below. And if you found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.